Berlin is Germany's hip and modern capital, but it's also a city with a rich and tragic past as one of the epicenters of both World War II and the Cold War. As the years pass, the buildings that house that history are crumbling. And that's its own tragedy, according to a camera-carrying, rule-breaking amateur historian we recently met, who's taken it upon himself to capture Berlin's past before it's lost. This is the theater. Kieran Fahi has a habit of inviting himself to places he's not wanted and finding a way in. He's locked. No, just a little stuck. For nearly 15 years, he's been sneaking into abandoned buildings around Berlin. This is for the lights, I guess. Berlin DDR, country doesn't exist anymore. These are like living museums. A trip with Fahi can feel like stepping out of a time machine. Oh, we got a newspaper here. Yeah? In Russian. Or a moment later, <laughs> like stepping into a horror movie. Oh boy, what's this? The whole time, it feels like a kind of illicit race. But we can't go in, can we not? Oh, okay, yeah, they're all nailed shut. We might have the way here. Have you been caught doing this? Yeah, yeah. How's that go? And there was one time where the guy, I thought he was actually gonna assault me. He threatened to call the police. He wanted me to delete the photos and I refused. I would have like, I would have gladly gone to prison rather than delete those photos. Why? Well, you're never gonna get the photos back. His photos now capture the decay of nearly a hundred sites, filling the pages of two photography books and a website, Abandoned Berlin. What I would suggest is we go to the swimming pool. Okay. This was Fahey's eighth visit to Wunsdorf, a military base where the Nazi high command orchestrated World War II, and later 75,000 Soviets were based in an enclave known as Little Moscow. I think the colors have faded a bit since the last time I was here. After the Soviet Union fell, Wunsdorf was hastily abandoned, and 29 years later, it's become a time capsule. So these signs are here, what, 80 years? The Russian signs made much more hastily. The Germans printed these very nice ink on metal signs, and the Russians, it looks like with a magic marker, covered them up with the translations. As soon as we got there, Fahi walked straight toward a glass image of a Soviet statue that he had photographed on a prior trip. See all that glass there? Oh, yeah. It laid in pieces on the floor. But someone smashed it to crap. I think in a way that actually makes the photos more important because that's all, they're all that's left now, that's it. A lot of places don't preserve the history. Some places have histories that people don't necessarily want to remember, like particularly stories of Jewish persecution. My idea is to take pictures to kind of preserve some memories and tell their stories. Yeah. So how did an Irish transplant to Berlin become an unofficial photographer of Germany's past? Kind of by accident. In 2009, Fahey's then girlfriend happened to mention a place called Spree Park, an abandoned East German amusement park. And told me, no, but you're not allowed to go in there because there's a sign and it says it's, you know, you're not allowed. <laughs> and for her, this was the end of the story. But for me, it was like, holy, you know, I needed, like, I had to go in. It was the beginning of the story. Yeah, it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. So you had, like, dinosaurs, like, all over the place, the, all the old roller coasters, the rides. And I actually thought it was such a shame that uh, there was this magical place that nobody went to. She says the way in changes all the time. Berlin gave him plenty more to explore. We just need to be careful, that's all. Back in 2014 for a documentary project. Solid enough? Not really. I joined him at an old hospital complex called B Litz. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa! Through some dodgy yeah. tunnels and up a collapsing staircase, we finally got a glimpse of where a young Adolf Hitler had been treated during World War I. Wow. I think Germans secretly would just rather, you know, nature takes over and, you know, it's gone. In the last nine years, Fahey's brand of urban exploring has become more popular. Wunsdorf offers tours of the site and gave us permission to film this story here. Here's Vladimir. The buildings Fahey explores are generally protected by law from demolition, but with no obvious future use, many are just slowly crumbling. It's kind of a race against time for me because I know that the places are deteriorating. 
It's a point of pride that Fahey leaves every site as he found it. He disapproved of even touching the tile of a mosaic. I'm pretty sure we shouldn't not touch the artworks. But reaching into the past is only getting harder. It's the first time I've seen it. Even for him. There's motion cameras now, which is stuff I didn't have to contend with before. Yeah. I was caught actually in one place. It was like the motion sensors. They asked me how I got in. I said, look, I came in over the fence. You'd be an effective security consultant. Yeah, but I'll never work for the other side. Never. Doesn't matter how much you pay me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, this is, this is like too much fun. There's always too much to see. <laughs> I like that guy. Yeah. So they let us shoot there. They kick us out at four o'clock, and he's like, it's okay, we'll just sneak right back in. <laughs> kick us out. It's amazing to preserve history, and I understand why some people wouldn't want to remember those moments or have that memory of it, but it's important to know the past and to have that image, to have that if these places are crumbling. But uh, the, the, the sheer like largesse of some of these places, I, I don't understand why they're completely abandoned. Well, law doesn't allow them to be demolished, and practicality doesn't allow them to have a future use, and so there they crumble. Yeah.